I'm playing the part of John Wesley. Good job. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm Tamu. I'm playing the part of Emily. And I'm married to Carl. Who? Rich Matthews playing the part of Carl. Carl who? Anderson. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm Tori. And I play the part of Zinkyo. I'm married to Lee. And I'm married to Ezekiel, and I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm Ashley, I'm playing part of Mr. Anderson, and I ain't taking any Ezekiel. All right. And I'm Jesse, I'm just saying it. Oh, she is our, she is our, uh, uh, oh, oh, person. Mommy, can I get the last one? Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Family Foundation. Ezekiel, the fact is that Ezekiel was actually the son of John C. Cole, and that his mother was Keziah Anderson. New information revealed by extensive research on the part of Sandra Hollingsworth. The oral history provided by Carl Anderson by Carl Anderson forms the basis of the play and may be slightly different than reported information. I am your narrator. My name is Lisa Holden. This, the year was 1800. Ezekiel Cole was approximately 12 years of age. He found himself all alone after a raid on the native American village where he met with his parents. Standing near a familiar tree with his head down, he tried his best to hold back his fears. He believes he must be brave. What shall I do? There's no one left. What shall I do without my family? A tall white man approaches Ezekiel. He appears to be friendly. You are welcome to go home with me. I promise no harm will come to you. You may live with me and my family. Mr. Anderson pats Ezekiel on the back and invites him to follow him. I made up my mind I will join the Eastern Tennessee Volunteer Militia. I hope you approve. I think you should make your own decisions. You're a grown man now, but please be careful. Ezekiel leaves to join the militia, feeling that he is strong and brave. Records show that Ezekiel joined the Eastern Tennessee Voluntary Militia in 1814 and, and was assigned to a company of mounted gunmen, later referred to as the Calvary. The, the captain was John Brown. One of the famous battles in which he participated was the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. It is interesting that he registered in the military as Ezekiel Cole, but was later known as Ezekiel Anderson. I am not afraid to fight, but I'm tired of all the bloody battles I've been a part of. I don't think this is a life for me. Ezekiel resigns after a few months of fighting. He receives his last play pay from the militia in May 1814. Well, they have paid me a total of $90.52 for my services, and my horses are worth more than that when I was only earning $8 a month. Ezekiel mounted up and rode away with his personal belongings. Having apparently made friends with a fellow soldier in his company by the name of Owen, Ezekiel rode with him to Kentucky. There he met a beautiful woman named Winnie Dowen. They soon became friends, and within the next year, there were plans for marriage. His life was changing. I hope you will do the honor of becoming my wife. I would like to spend the rest of my life with you. Mm. Ezekiel stands with his hat in his hand, looking into Winnie's eyes. I approve. <laughs> After their marriage, in April, on April 22nd, 1815, Ezekiel and Winnie moved to Illinois. The name on the marriage record is Ezekiel Anderson. Winnie's <laughs> name was spelled Gowen, G-O-I-N, or Gowen, G-O-W-A-N. We must assume that either spelling was considered correct. The Andersons lived in Crawford and Lawrence counties in Illinois for more than 20 years. There they became the parents of Jefferson, John H., 
Mary, Matilda, Harriet, Adeline, Winna Ann, Andrew, Alice, and Amon. People are finding farmland at a good price in Michigan. Do you think we should consider moving there? You know, I haven't felt right about leaving, living here since the troops were so the people can march west and leave the land. Ezekiel seems anxious as he discusses moving with Aunt Lenny. You might be right. Although we've done pretty well farming, it might be best for us to move to Michigan. Ezekiel and Winnie refer to the Trail of Death, a forced march of ma many Native Americans in Illinois in 1838, intended to allow more white settlers to occupy their land. Although Ezekiel had been listed as a colored man on the census report because he was married to a woman of color, he wasn't sure the government could allow him, would allow him to live in the state. Remember, Ezekiel had no tribal connections since he was a child when he was taken by the enemy. Nevertheless, he could be, still be identified as a Native American because of his appearance. I'm here to write for us to sell out and move to Cass County, Michigan. I believe you would like it here. Help me get everything loaded. They packed up their household goods and prepared to leave Illinois for good. A few months later, after they arrived, after the arrival of the Andersons in Cass County, Michigan, their son, John D., decided to marry Frances Allen Day. She was the daughter of Joseph Allen and Rebecca Taylor Allen. Frances was 17 years of age, and John D. was 22 when they said their vows on March 22, 1849. Witnesses were Ezekiel Anderson and Joseph Allen. I promise to love you, take care of you in sickness and in health. John takes her hands and looks into her eyes with love. She says she's faithful and a I can't hear you. She's faithful John D. Anderson and wife were the parents of seven children. They were Jefferson, John Wesley, James, Exley, and Geneva, Mary Ellen, and Tony. In the early 1860s, the Civil War was raging. The states in the South had decided they would form a separate country. They called it the Confederacy. And the fighting issue was slavery. At first, the African American men were not encouraged to join the army. But after losing several battles, the United States government asked that all able bodied men fight for their country. John B. Anderson considered the fact that his brothers, Andrew, Jefferson, Amon, and Ellis, had enlisted and felt that he also had to go to war. I've got to go fight with my brother. Slavery has come to an end, and we all need to uh, win this war. I hate to leave you and the children. I understand that you feel the need to each other and all the great men trying to thank Francis weeps as John D. prepares to leave. He kneels to pray for his safe return. All they gave me was a hat. Colored folks don't get no uniform, so I'm, I'm wearing my hat. John D. did not return. He died in Nashville, Tennessee, a Civil War casualty. Since John Wesley Anderson had grown to manhood without his father, he was an independent and ambitious young man. He was known throughout the community of Calvin Township due to his participation in excellent marching band. The young men competed in various towns and villages in southwest Michigan. He knew his future wife, Delilah Catherine Kett Wilson, for several years before their marriage in 1882. She was the daughter of Makeup and Elvira Coker Wilson. We're always
They embrace as they plan to announce their upcoming marriage to their parents.
Adams welcomed Emmeline and Carl. They were married in Windsor, Ontario. By the time the couple returned to Vandalia, Emmeline's parents, Charles and Melinda Harris, were so relieved she was alive, they forgot all about punishment. At age 16, she became Mrs. Carl B. Anderson. The hasty marriage of the runaways on September 20th, Carl and Emmeline Anderson lasted 65 years until his passing in 1969. And they produced 10 children over the first 25 years. They were Madeline, Lauren, Aline, Dorothy, Violet, Catherine, Joseph, Marjorie, John Harris, and Ruth. <laughs> Great 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 grandchildren of Carl and Emmeline. Please stand and be recognized. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.